Hey guys, welcome back. So, where we last left off, I had just finished showing you guys how to set up and get ready to paint. And here we are with part two, um, of, well, in substance anyways, not part two overall, this is part three. But we have a trooper for me, done colored. This is the design I want. And, well, minus one thing, I'm gonna put a symbol right here on the chest, and I'm going to show you that now. Yeah, and you'll see that I have a lot of layers. Um, obviously, each one of these layers is a different pattern. That is a personal preference for me, because this video, wear and tear, is going to show you why, but pretty much it just makes it so it's easier for me to do my wear and tear without overlapping and making something else look bad. So I am going to find a symbol that I like, and I'm going to look up just alpha. And any alpha will work, uh, for me anyways. But I'm just going to find one. And this is kind of just to show you guys what it's like using the alphas. And you can import your own alphas. You can do a lot in substance. That's why I like using it. It's why I recommend it. Um, but yeah. So look, you could do Echo. It's not, you have hands. I mean, it's not Rex's hand, but Rex's hand looks kind of weird in the show. You'd have to hand draw that, but yeah. So what I was going to do is I was going to do some kind of box. Um, because I based this guy loosely off of the 501st which is a pretty cool unit. Although the 212 is still the best unit. So I'm going to do this box right here. Now, it's kind of like an arrow, kind of not, and I'm just kind of using this just to show you things you can do, right? Rather than having a symbol be um, on the actual like paint, you could have a symbol of the paint being removed like that. And so as you can see, I didn't turn out the greatest in that, but you could do things like that. There you go. See, a little bit better. And then I'm going to actually go back to shape. And I'm going to repaint this. Because I did not like the look of that. And there we have it. Now the model is almost done. Okay, so I'm going to save it. Now, let's talk about wear and tear. There's multiple different ways you can do wear and tear. It really all depends on what you want. For me, I have found that the way OK Fellow uh, taught me is my favorite. So, it involves using multiple different brushes. It's done by hand. And pretty much the premise of what you're doing is you're making the paint look more cartoonish and like it was hand painted. So, you take a dirt brush down here, and I went down here to brushes. And I just clicked on dirt brushed after looking up dirt and you turn it to uh, erase mode see and it's at 100% opacity and I just click here I hold shift and I just move it all the way down the uh, paint line and obviously it didn't work great because it's a rounded object and shift is a straight line so I had to actually readjust that so there we go just like that I would do the exact same thing for the other side. And there's an advantage to doing this wear and tear technique rather than the other ones. While it is more time consuming, it can make your model look a little bit better if you're not great at getting things perfectly even on both sides, especially since uh, the substance mirroring mode doesn't always work with your model. Um, this is actually one of them that it doesn't work in. It's slightly off and it's noticeable. Um, so. Doing that makes it a little bit softer on the edges, so it looks a little bit more even. Now, you'll also notice the base textures I'm using have wear and tear built into them. It makes it a little bit easier for me to do wear and tear on this base. However, I know that most of the other bases, if not all of the other bases, don't have this. So, uh, keep that in mind, that I don't have to do as much for this model to make it look as good. And see, that was too small, so I actually had to redo that. Uh, if you make it too small, it just looks like a line. See, so yeah, and I'm doing it like that, and it kind of gives this like hand painted look almost, um, while also making it easier on the eyes and just overall a better model, in my opinion. Now, some people don't like my wear and tear, some people do. It's up to you. Um, there's multiple different methods. I know a couple of them. Uh, the other one you can do, and I know this is what Cosmo does, is he uses generators. Now, for me, I don't like generators, I think they look a little pixelated and blocky in game. Uh, but some people really do like the generators, so it just really depends on what you want to do. Now, 
that was pretty much just a quick little edit of what, and I'm going to touch that up right there because I think that looks bad. So we should go that. Okay. So here we have it. The basic wear and tear part for this piece is done. Basic. Now we're going to go down here to sandpaper brush. I'm going to make the size like this, and I'm just going to turn the shape using the uh, control right click, move mouse up and down. I just move it all the way up. And as you can see, it would completely demolish my paint. Well, I don't like that because I think that looks bad. So I'm going to go to 5. 5% 5 opacity up there. I'm going to left click once. And I actually forgot to do something. That's on me. I'm actually going to come down here. And I'm going to scroll up to angle jitter. And I'm going to turn angle jitter off. And then I'm going to... There we go. Just like that. And what that did, and that's even, even that's a little too much opacity. So I'm going to do 3. No, five was probably, uh, I guess I'm going to have to do five because it won't show up at three. Okay, so what that does is you'll notice, first of all, it lightens the color very slightly, but it also gives us its padded look where from far away, it looks more like paint rather than a flat color. And down here, it also affected down here because this is all one layer. And so that's actually why, exactly why I put um, all my different patterns in different uh, layers and so that's actually why it stayed like that was just like I show you guys. So it's gonna make it this model a little bit more difficult to make, but that's okay. So we're just gonna go like that. Okay. So here you have it. Wear and tear is basically done. I got to the back a little bit. Eh. Mostly done and for the most part I don't need to be too specific like I said because I already have that scratch PNG in the dirt and it just makes the model look nicer um, and that's also done by a generator but it's in the base textures for this base so I don't need to do that but I do know how to do it so if you guys need help doing something like that I can teach you a little bit I'm not great at uh, generators uh, Cosmo would be your better guy for generators okay so now I have basic wear and tear, however, you'll notice that there are scratches on the armor, right? And you don't have armor get scratched without paint shipping off. That's how paint works. So go back to your dirt brushed at 100% opacity. Go down here to a smaller size and just hand draw some scratches in. Not too many, depending on your guy, like this is a private, so that's probably good. Just three scratches. And there's going to be more up here, uh, just so you know, for wear and tear. I didn't do something in here, like that, like that, maybe one right there. On the back, we'll add a couple. That's a little big. Right here, you got wear and tear up a little bit more than you should have, but that's okay. Like I said, this is just for a tutorial. And you'll see, there we go, that's, that's pretty good. We're going to add some more in the front. Like that. Okay. That's yeah, I like that. Okay. So now I'm going to use the same brush, the dirt uh brush brush. Change the opacity to 30. And I'm simply going to come up here and just go along the edges of the armor. Because this is like realistically where the paint would wear off the most is the edges of the armor. Just because that's how paint works, it wears off the edges first. And uh, oops, I did not mean to shoot. Okay, well, I just clipped through that. That's fine. So, I'm also going to do that on the breastplate right up here because, yeah, it's a crease there. You can see now that that's kind of what it would look like. Yeah. There you go. See? I like that. And I actually really like that. I think that turned out really nice. Just nice, simple, small details. Um, and then you just do that for all your layers, and you're good. And since it's at 30% opacity, you don't want to click on the same place twice. There you go. And boom. There you have it. Simple wear and tear. And you could probably make a case to go around the edges right here. Um, in fact, I will do that just for the sake of 
uniformity, but you don't have to, honestly. I have found that sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. It really just depends on the model, but this one's kind of basic, so I'm ready to bet. Um, the other tip I give anyone who just finished painting is if you have a lot of alphas, remove some of them. You don't want a lot of alphas. Um, I know I went crazy with alphas on one of my first packs, and people didn't like that. I thought they looked really cool, and alphas do look really cool. It's just not realistic as clones in general wouldn't have had that. They would have had basic geometric shapes, maybe a republic symbol here and there, or symbol of their unit. Yay guys, something like that. Or J guys, actually, sorry. Um, But yeah, that's that's pretty much all I have for you this time. Uh, that's wear and tear. That's all I do my wear and tear. Uh, generators, you just need to have smart materials, which is this thing up here. But you gotta bake the textures with Control shift b first. So you just bake it, okay? You bake it at uh, 2048. And then once you bake it, and I'm not going to bake it because it takes a little bit, then you come back here, you hit this smart materials button, and then you just, um, I think, I believe the one that most people use is plastic rough, which is this one right here, or armor, plastic armor simple, no, yeah, this one, so yeah, just keep that in mind, and I can always help you whenever. So just keep that in mind, guys, that I'm down to help. I have the Discord in the description of the last video, and I'm going to put it in the, the description of this one. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I have for you. Um, I'm going to finish up wear and tearing this guy, and then I will make a video on porting it into Gary's Mod, which is the fun part that I'm sure most of you have been waiting for and don't really care about the rest of this. Uh, yeah, so see you then.